Hi, welcome to the video. My name's Zach Chronic, and today I'm taking a look at the Destiny 2 Weekly Reset for December 13, 2022, and obviously the first week of the Dawning Event, which is obviously going to be going for, I believe, three weeks? So everything you can get, all of the different cosmetics, the special encounters, all of the cookies and candy will be available until the end of the week. Or the, the three weeks. And with that, right now for this week is going to be Double Gambit, or at least Double Infamy. For me, it's going to be Zero Gambit and Double Infamy. <laughs> so first up for the event, all you have to do to get started, go to the tower, talk to Eva, she'll give you the oven, as well as a book. I, I hope Zavala likes the book. Okay, there's the oven. And then you take the materials that she just gave you and you craft that particular cookie. So to do so, you just go to your quest section and of course you go into the oven. And in this oven, you'll see perhaps a gallo doodle, which is a recipe that everybody has available based on just putting certain ingredients into the oven. And if you've done this for a long time, you likely have a lot of different recipes already unlocked. You might have to do a couple more steps before they give it to you. And once you've baked every single cookie, then you can masterwork it and it will become cheaper for all of the stuff. Oh, I love the snow. Look at it go. <laughs> you know, there's nothing better than destroying fresh blanket of snow. Other than obviously giving Zavala his gift. Here you go, buddy. And of course, you can go ahead and go to your quest inventory to open up your event card, which is going to be right next to the thing that still says Unclaimed Challenges, uh, and look at all the stuff you have to unlock. And well, there you go. I got I got the Pulse Rifle, and that obviously helps with the progress for the, the seal, which is going to be obviously straightforward. And then, of course, you go back to, to her, and then she gives you different upgrades that you can buy. They give you different bonuses that to get that to do the quest, and then give you... Spirit, there's there's a bunch of different things. Essentially, just play a lot of activities. They'll give you a bunch of stuff. And of course, she also has bounties. So make sure you pick up all of those bounties, which gives you more of the stuff that you need. And if you've never played a dawning event before, essentially every different kind of way that you kill enemies, like with void damage or with auto rifles or with a sword or a certain type of enemy, like a taken enemy or a cabal enemy, they all drop different kinds of materials. You then take these materials and combine them in different ways to make cookies. And in case you're wondering, the upgraded card rewards look like this, and it goes up to this one. Oh, and it seems that the quest actually tells you how to create a lot of the cookies itself. So you can see here it says Banshee44 says he likes to elementary tapioca that uses vex milk and bullet spray so you can literally see exactly how you make the certain cookies i'm a little upset okay yeah never mind so it does include all of the recipes that i did in the past few years so uh other than the new ones which seem to be here and here they're all saved so you don't have to continually go through the different items and put the ingredients together and i believe if you do a wrong combination you should probably still get a burn edge transit Ooh, ooh. Powering up, baby! Powering up! <laughs> I love these things. I don't know what they are, but I love them. Moving on with the regular reset, let's go ahead and take a look at the Nightfall Ordeal. This week, it's gonna be the Scarlet Keep. It's gonna be the big red castle with the Hash Ladoon at the end. This one for 100k, probably gonna be Legend. Although it's a very high-scoring Nightfall, it does take some time. And the rotating Vanguard Burn is gonna be Void Singe. The rotating Crucible playlist is going to be Mayhem. The King's Fall Raid Challenge is going to be Gaze of Maze, taking place in the third encounter with the Golgoroth Ogre. And in this one, anytime you trade the Gaze with your teammate, the person who has currently the Gaze has to stand in the pool with the DPS team whenever it's traded. So just hop down right before you trade it. The rotating Raid and Dungeon this week is going to be the Garden of Salvation and the Pit of Heresy. Hopefully next week we get DSC so I can run out some craft builds. As for the week two challenges, we have a bunch of new challenges and it still says unclaimed challenges. Right, so first one's gonna be completing the week two of the seasonal stuff. Next one is gonna be Heist Battlegrounds and Death Tongue Cloisters, which is an enemy apparently. <laughs> Defeating combatants with Void or Solar in Heist Battleground. Focus a Seasonal Seraph Engram. Cosmodrone Activities, Bounties, Patrols, Public Guns, and Lost Sectors. Lost Sector and Legend are higher. Mid-range Weapon Calibration, like Hand Cannons, Glaive, Auto Rifle, Fusion Rifle, Machine Guns, and the Cosmodrome. Banking Modes, Defeating Blockers and Defeating Guardians and Gambit. Defeat Gardens and Bonus with Defeating Them with Void or Stasis. And Defeat Fallen in Vanguard and Bonus against Tougher Combatants. Up next, let's take a look at the Eververse's inventory. Wow, the person's back looks terrible. Do you see this? That's a bro. Broken ass back! What the fuck? Anyways, for the Bright Dust options, we have baking cookies, an emote that we have seen in previous years that you put into a, an oven, you cook some stuff. Solo fist bump, which uh, I guess you just fist bump nobody. It's a non multiplayer emote. Imagine if it was a multiplayer emote, but nobody could join it. It just kept <laughs> denying. Uh, it, there's the transmit effect of the snowman entrance, there's the be beneficence. Uh, which looks like a new shader, I don't remember it. It's very red and green, very shiny. I like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and get it. 
I only have uh, 82,000, uh, you know, bright dust, so I might as well. For the other bright dust section, we have the snowball fight emote, where I guess you literally spawn a snowball and you probably throw it at somebody. We have the snowshoes emote, where you just put on the snowshoes and you hop around. I've had this one for a while. The festive shell, which looks newish, but it might be from last year because it has the antlers. They did the antlers a lot last year. Uh, we have the <laughs> mirthmobile, which is one of the fan favorite sparrows. There are two mini sparrows in the game. This is the toboggan looking one if you want one of those. Although I will keep in mind that this has the full hitbox of a big one, so I never like driving them because I always run into stuff. Uh, we have the Cirrus Major, which looks like this. Very nice looking sparrow. We have an ornament for the Anarchy, which came out when Anarchy was uh, cracked out of its mind. And Anarchy's probably doing well this season with the grenade upgrade. We have a Sweet Entrance Transmit Effect. We have the same Sweet Entrance Transmit Effect. Another Snowy, uh, the Howling Blizzard uh, Transmit Effect. If it ever wanted to load, it's pretty straightforward. It does a little shh, lots of wind. Ah, there we go. Looks like this. Not bad. Depends on how you want it. We have the Aniline Shock, which is very kind of like cold blue. Uh, we have the Dawning fest Festiveness, which has a little bit of darkness to contrast stuff. And finally, the Dawning Warmth, which is something I have used on a number of different things. It depends how it shakes up. But, you know, for example, the legs here look pretty darn nice. The arms, yeah, without the red, looks pretty nice. And of course, if you don't know, there's also an event section where you can buy a bunch of stuff for silver, which is going to be premium currency, or some of them for bright dust, especially or specifically the armor set. So if you want the new armor set or previous year's armor set, you can buy it for silver or bright dust. And this is for all of them. So if you want any of the previous years, depending on what class you're currently on, you can do that now. And I hear the hunters have a nice little hoodie, which is actually pretty cool. Although you do have to buy them in a full set. Otherwise, you just have to wait for them to come by as something you can buy uh, for Bright Dust along the, the way. Beyond that, there's a bunch of different stuff for the event. You have the Break Your Back with a Snowball. You have a bunch of different emotes. You have a Nutcracker Ghost Shell. God damn! That is, that is adorable. Uh, we have a bunch of ghost projections. We have different ships. I thought that was like a Yoten for a second there. What the heck is this thing? That's like a brick! A uh, bunch of different sparrows, ornaments, like Beck Smith the class has one, Acre Scepter has one. Pretty fitting if I may say so myself. We have an ornament for the Cold Front, which is a legendary. A couple of different emotes, like like carving the ice and different uh, stuff from previous years. And there's a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff from previous years, so just take a look at the different things. Uh, there's You can have, obviously, that, which is literally a snowman mobile, and a bunch of different ships, and a bunch of different emotes. It really does go back, because we've had like four or five Dominics at this point in Destiny 2, and they're quite, um, they're quite festivous. Ooh, this pulse rifle came with Desperado. It might be built in, but ooh. <laughs> and of course, let's take a look at Banshee's inventory. First up, the Perseus D, which is shoot the loot for pull. I hate 150s personally, and there's explosive payload as a possible option. Rest of the stats are okay. After that, we have Syncopation, which is a craftable. Outlaw and Headstone is a decent combination. Has a lot more range and recoil direction stuff, which is actually a pretty darn good roll, other than the fact that probably would select something else other than Outlaw, because you don't really need that much reload on this weapon. This is a pretty darn good roll. Other than that, we have the Cantata, which is also a time payload kind of weapon, and you know me, explosive payload or time payload, if you can have it, definitely take it. Otherwise, decent stats. After that, the Fugue 755, which is a fourth times firing line, which is pretty good for PvE, although I do still prefer 72 RPMs for PvE. Following that, we have a Typhon GL5, which is unrelenting and frenzied. This particular weapon can obviously roll with explosive lights, probably something better here, and of course spike grenades, so not very good. And finally, the Taipan, which is a field prep box breathing, which is a pretty darn good roll. Although most people really do like to see more firing line, maybe auto loading. Although field prep is also really good, and of course just impact if you can. And of course, a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom, Dad, Kip, Shaw, Rob, Strayer, Mondays, Stu Buckings, Juno Panther, Casey Reagan, and Marcus Silver for their support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy my Nights Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.